Yes, the Director General has admitted that the WHO's own systems are not good enough. He said that the alert system uh, is too blunt of an instrument to deal with complex emergencies. They've got a red light and a green light, he says, and nothing in between, which makes it quite restrictive and simplistic. And an example of that is, of course, you'll know that 10 days ago, uh, the World Health Organization said that the coronavirus was not a global public health emergency. And then just days later, it reversed that decision and said that yes it was and so for this reason they're trying to look at options now uh, in which they could create an intermediate level of alert. Now he's also stressed that uh, countries themselves need to look at their own level of preparedness. The world remains dangerously unprepared for a global pandemic. For too long the world has operated on a cycle of panic and neglect. We throw money at an outbreak, and when it's over, we forget about it and do nothing to prevent the next one. Great. Well, Isabel, the WHO is saying that the travel bans many countries have put in place are not the best way to deal with the crisis. Why? Yes, we've just spoken to a spokesman here at the WHO and of course we're seeing a number of travel bans uh, by many countries, the USA, Australia, New Zealand, uh, but the WHO itself says that this is not the right way to be dealing with the crisis. It says that travel bans and uh, border closures, uh, they, they, they mean that people could attempt to uh, enter countries via other means, uh, via other borders, and then you've got people coming into the country uh, clandestinely, uh, they may be infected by the virus. And and you've got no way of tracking them. They also say that these measures, uh, they unnecessarily interfere with trade and travel, which of course is why we're seeing that huge economic, uh, part of why we're seeing that huge economic impact on China. Um, now he says that aside from, uh, or as well as that um, inability to track people who are infected, uh, you also uh, risk, yes, people getting into the border uh, via different means, and you have no way of monitoring them because you want to be able to uh, stop people at the border, work out who they've been in contact with and then of course track where they go next because we know uh, that people may not show symptoms of the virus for up to 14 days. So for this reason they're saying that people, countries should uh, assess their own level of risk and based on this evidence uh, set up testing stations, uh, be able to monitor people at airports uh, and borders and also as I mentioned uh, keep track of anyone who's been in contact uh, with people who have travelled to China.